Welcome to Hope is Here. My name is Greg Horn, and we are approaching the Super Bowl this weekend. And one of my favorite sermons that I've ever heard by my hero, Wayne Smith, the founding pastor of Southland Christian uh, for 40 years. He did a sermon one time uh, called Playing Hurt, and he preached it before Super Bowl Sunday because he had several great illustrations of people playing hurt from the NFL, college football, and Anyway, it was so requested that he started preaching it every year, the Sunday of the Super Bowl. And so as we're approaching this year's Super Bowl, I know so many of my listeners that uh, they're playing hurt. And uh, sometimes when you're playing hurt, it can keep you from having hope. And so I know that you will be blessed by this. Uh, we can't get it all in one program. It's it's only 25 minutes. Wayne uh, said if you go more than 25, 30 minutes, uh, nobody will listen. People you know, get tired, restless. So this was only 25 minutes. So we're going to play part one of it today and part two tomorrow. But a lot of you do know who Wayne Smith is and just a beloved servant leader, pastor here in Central Kentucky, the founding pastor of South and Christian Church. But you know what? Maybe you don't know. You've never heard Wayne before. And I think you're going to be blessed, encouraged over the next two days as we're going to pray, play part one today of his sermon. And then I hope that you'll join us again tomorrow as we'll play the second part of this sermon called Playing Hurt. So hope you'll let friends know if they... Uh, Used to love Wayne Smith and hearing him preach, a great opportunity. I want to continue his legacy. As long as I'm alive, Wayne will be alive. And as you know, if you're a regular listener of Hope is Here, I quote him very, very often because nobody had more impact on me as a follower of Jesus than Wayne Smith. So be blessed today and tomorrow as we listen to Wayne Smith on Playing Hurt. Our Heavenly Father, we feel this morning as though we can just reach out and touch you. And we thank you for the atmosphere and more especially for the reality of the indwelling of the Holy Spirit. That when you left, and before you come back again, you said, I'll, lo, I'm with you always, even to the end of the world. I pray, Father, that as we discuss playing hurt this morning, uh, there are those here that have been or are being hurt or will be. And I just pray that I may say something from your word that will inspire, and motivate, and soothe. Bless us to that end that we'll feel the hedge around us and your comfort. In Jesus' name, amen. Second Corinthians, the fourth chapter, uh, reading verses 8 and 9, we are hard-pressed on every side, but not crushed, perplexed, not in despair, persecuted, but not abandoned, struck down, but not destroyed. You can't get anything more direct than that. We're hard pressed on every side, but we're not crushed. We're perplexed, but not in despair. Uh, we're persecuted, but not abandoned. We're struck down, but not destroyed. Uh, what the Apostle Paul is saying here, that I'm down, but I'm not out. I've always been an avid football fan, like other sports too. The Apostle Paul, 20 times in his writing, uses athletic terms such as a race to be run, game to be played, trophy to be earned, uh, game, uh, fought a good fight, finished the course, kept the faith. The name Jimmy Brown is a little more familiar these days because there's a fellow on trial out in California that says that Jimmy Brown was his mentor and his, his idol as he was, O.J. was running. Jimmy Brown was a great star for Cleveland Browns. He retired, set some records that have never been broken. But one of his uh, great trademarks was the fact that any time he was tackled, he got up very slowly and walked back to the huddle. Why do you walk back so slowly, he answered, because I didn't want the opposition to know that I was hurt. If I limped on my right leg, they would hit me there the next play. My left leg, that's where they'd hit me. If I held my back, they would drive the helmet into the back. You see, I was playing hurt, but I didn't want them to know I was hurt. There's a man called the Iron Man of baseball, Lou Gehrig. Played 15 years, first baseman, New York Yankees. Set a record that's never been broken. Played 2,130 consecutive games, never missed a game. Yet when he retired, they x-rayed his hands. Every finger had been broken once, some twice, some three times. He was hurt, but he never missed a game. Sports enthusiast uh, writers tell us probably the greatest football team ever assembled was the... Uh, 
Swanee College, I think it's now called the College of the South in Tennessee, in 1899. And this team played six, five teams in six days in 1899. Uh, Texas University, Texas A&M, Tulane, LSU, Mississippi College, and uh, they played both offense and defense. They scored 113 points, no one scored on them. Offense and defense. Uh, there were not very many players in that day. They were bruised, they were broken, they were bloody, but they played hurt. Everyone within the sound of my voice this morning on television, radio, and all in this sanctuary have been hurt. You are hurting now in some way, or you will be hurt. Last time I preached this sermon a couple years ago, a lady said, you know, I resented your saying that because everything was going well in our home. But since that time, I've noticed uh, that the Bible is right. You see, I'm just quoting the Bible, Job 14.1, man that is born of woman is of a few days and full of trouble. Now, why is that? because we're in the flesh, and the flesh is imperfect. You make mistakes, I make mistakes. Uh, all of us in this room at one time are brokenhearted, depressed, sick, beat down, misunderstood, disappointed, wounded, feelings are hurt, pride wounded, been offended, insulted, got a raw deal, accident, jealous, lonely. And the greatest hurt of all is when your children hurt you. Now, if the truth were known, most of us here this morning have tucked away somewhere in our subconscious what we call a, a trip. We sort of imagine we're on a train and, and we, we're, we're going toward some kind of a station that we fantasized that once we get there, the bands are playing and, and the flags are flying and everything that we've ever hoped for in life will be, will be there. But in the meantime, on this train, we're walking up and down the aisle, we're impatient, sometimes we're irritable. When are we gonna to get to that station? What is your station? Well, when I can get married, or when I'm 18, or when I get the last kid through college, or when we pay off the mortgage, or I get a promotion, or when I retire. And you see, we don't live life, we're wasting it. We don't smell the roses, because there's this illusion that somewhere, when you arrive, you're gonna have it made. Uh, sooner or later, we must realize that there's no one station. The true joy of life is the trip, not the destination. Psalms 124, this is the day the Lord hath made. Let us rejoice and be glad in it. Someone said, relish the moment. Yesterday is in the past. Tomorrow is in the future. Today is a gift. That's why they call it the present. While we're on this trip in the flesh, we're imperfect. First Peter 4.12, think it not strange when fire trials come upon you. Scott Peck in one of his books, or well, the book he wrote called Life is Difficult, he said, once you truly understand that life is difficult and you expect it, then you accept it. And it no longer really matters. Now some people never fully understand what the Bible says that we're gonna have problems. <laughs> And so they moan incessantly and they stay upset and they act as though what has happened to them is unique. It's never happened to anybody else. God had one son without sin, no son without sorrow. Acts uh, 14, 22, Paul warned the, warned the new converts in Asia, we must go through many hardships to enter the kingdom of God. John Blanchard in his book suggests that uh, if you think your troubles are over, when you became a Christian, then there's two things wrong. Number one, your Bible's closed and your head is empty. Now, I'm not a pessimistic person this morning. I'm just telling you as it is. It will come in a doctor's diagnosis, friction in the office, thoughtlessness of a mate, accident, teenage, tantrum, injury. I don't know how it'll be wrapped, but it'll come. My first point is learn to play when you're hurt physically. The largest funeral in the history of our church was right in this building, February the 22nd, 1986. Probably the best known lawyer in Lexington, known by millions as Thomas Pierce Bell. Known by millions though as Tommy. The man with the striped shirt, number seven, 
in the NFL official for 15 years. John Clay, the Herald Leader, said he was the most popular referee in history. Kenny Rice of Sports Channel 36 said, I remember him, but more importantly, I'm glad I knew him. Uh, Earl Cox of the Courier Journal said, Bell spoke just before he died to the Bar Association in Louisville and said, when you play in the NFL, you play hurt or you don't play. And those who play hurt are the people that go the extra mile. Tommy played hurt about four years before he died because he wasn't well. Yet when I called to speak to him on Saturday, his wife said he's in bed, but he'll be there tomorrow. 1983, I preached this sermon for the first time. Tommy Bell stood right here beside me. I said, tell me about these players that play hurt. He said, I remember Joe Namath as well as any of them. Should never have been on the field. His, uh, he was in such bad shape. And then Tommy loved to tell when he played football for Henry Clay and had a German coach by the name of Heber. They'd tell me he was tough. And Tommy came out of the game one day and he said, Bill, well, why'd you come out of the game? He said, Coach, I think my leg's broken. He said, well, get back in until you're sure. <laughs> His favorite story and and this is a true story, and I told right from this pulpit in, at his funeral, uh, was Super Bowl three and seven. He was a, an official, and Kansas City Chief was playing, and Fred Arbanis uh, was a tight end, and he came right around and was creamed, which means a head-on collision. And his eye fell out. And not until then did millions on TV and the other team even know that he had an artificial eye. Wasn't any problem to find it, it was artificial turf. They found the eye. You're going to go home and eat in just a few minutes. It'll be all right. <laughs> Found the artificial eye and called for the water boy, sloshed it down, put it in. Big tall fellow, and Bell looked up at him and said, I, Fred, I can't believe it. Can't believe it. I mean, uh, you got one eye. Your future, your compensation, your career depends on your eyesight. You've already lost one eye. What would you do if you lost the other eye? <laughs> he said, I guess I'd become an official like you, Mr. Bell. <laughs> Now, Paul played hurt. Five times received 40 stripes, 195 stripes. Three times beat with a rod. Once I was stoned. Three times shipwrecked. In perils of robbers, wilderness, false brethren. Painfulness, weariness, hunger, cold, naked, care of the churches. And then in verse 10, therefore I take pleasure. Can you believe this? I take pleasure in infirmities and reproach and persecution and distress. For when, for Christ's sake, for when I am weak, then I'm made strong. I love people who play hurt. I love people that play hurt. I could name some here who've lost their only child, who sit here and sing every Lord's Day. And the ultimate hurt that you have in life is when you lose a child. Children are supposed to bury the parents and not the parents the child. I love Jim Abbott. 1993, pitched a no-hitter, unbelievable, born with one hand. What was the longest field goal in the history of football? New Orleans versus Detroit, November the 8th, 1970. 63 yards he kicked it. Well, what was so great about that? Tom Dempsey only had half a foot. 1980 Winter Olympics, one of the greatest upsets ever. The Soviet hockey team had not been whipped in 12 years. Our boys whipped them. What was unusual, every boy we had couldn't play in college. CMI is your full-service human resources provider in Central Kentucky. For 15 years, CMI Human Resources has taken great pride in helping organizations and people work. Whether it's employee handbooks or help in filling a position, no job is too large or too small for CMI. Contact the professionals today at CMI Human Resources, 859-296-2800 or online at cmiconsulting.com. 